In this video, I'll be showing you how to replace a heating element on an electric water heater. Now, if you're not sure if your heating element is bad or not, I have a different video where I show you how to test and check to see if your heating element is actually bad or not. If you need that video, I'm gonna put a link to it in the comments. Another common question that I get is, how do I know if I got the right heating element for my water heater? If you want to for sure get the right element, the easiest way to do this is to go to the manufacturer website. For example, mine is a Ream water heater. The official website of your brand water heater should have a page on it that will allow you to look up the parts that you need for your water heater. All you will need to look up your part is simply the serial number of your water heater. Typically, the official website has the highest prices, so what I like to do is to copy the part number and then look up the part somewhere else, such as Amazon, if they have it. Now that that's out of the way, let's start with the replacement. The first thing we're gonna wanna do before we do anything is turn the power off to the water heater at the circuit breaker. After the power is off, we're gonna wanna take off the cover plate that is hiding the thermostat and the upper element. Most electric water heaters will have two heating elements, an upper element and a lower element. Both of them are replaced in the same exact way, so I'm only gonna show you an example on the upper element. But if you're gonna replace one element, it's recommended to just go ahead and replace both of them as preventative maintenance, and then just keep the good old element as a spare. Under the cover plate, we're greeted with some insulation. You can simply take this out or move it out of the way, depending on what kind of insulation you have. And lastly, we need to remove this plastic guard cover that covers the element and the thermostat. Usually you can just pull on it and wiggle it, and it should snap right off. On top, we have our thermostat, and on the bottom is the heating element that we're gonna be replacing. Before we touch any of these wires, it's always a good idea to verify that the power is off, either using a non-contact voltage detector or a multimeter. Now that we've verified that the power is off, we can go ahead and disconnect the two wires going to the heating element. By the way, notice how the wires going to the terminals are between this little wall and the screw. When we're gonna put the new element in, we wanna put these wires in the same way. So you don't wanna put it on this side and then tighten the screw. You wanna put it in between the wall and the screw. And at this point, we wanna pause what we're doing here and drain the water heater first. And if you're wondering if it's possible to do this without draining the water heater, yes, it is possible. And actually, I used to do it that way all the time. In the trade, we call that doing it on the fly because you don't have to waste time draining the water heater and you don't have to waste time filling it back up. And another big benefit is that you don't have to touch the drain valve. If you worked on water heaters before, you'll understand. That, which used to not leak, leaks after you touch it. So for those reasons, I used to always do it on the fly. And if you want an example to see what it looks like to do it on the fly, I have another video where I replace a pressure relief valve without draining the water heater. If you wanna see what that looks like, check that video out. The reason that I started to usually drain water heaters instead when replacing the heating element is simply because of a bad experience. I was replacing a heating element one time and around the water heater they had a bunch of cardboard boxes and just a few feet away they had carpeting, which means that I need to do this replacement quickly otherwise everything's gonna get wet. So I throw a towel on the floor and I get started. When I take the element out, it gets stuck because oftentimes when these things fail, they either bend, warp, or break. So when you're taking them out, they don't exactly just slide out. You almost have to tear them out or you have to bend it and twist it to get it out. If there's no water that's gushing out, that's usually pretty simple. You can take your time and get that thing out slowly. But if the water is pouring out, you have to do this quick. So I was trying to yank this thing out and it was not coming out for the life of me. It looked kind of like this. So the element was sticking out about this much and I couldn't get it out any further. I had one hand on the water heater and I was trying to yank this thing out. And without thinking about it in the heat of the moment, I took my other hand and I grabbed the element on the metal part to try to help pull it out with both hands. What I failed to realize is that the element was covered in sharp scale. So as I yanked it really hard one more time, my hand slipped down the element and it just sliced my hand right open in multiple spots. So now there's water gushing out and there's blood gushing out of my hand. What I ended up doing with my remaining good hand is swinging the element up and down, up and down to try to snap it off. 
After about 15 seconds, I finally managed to snap that thing off and the broken piece just kind of fell inside of the water heater. By the way, that is okay. Usually no harm is done. It just kind of lays at the bottom of the tank. I got the new element in as quickly as I could and then started to assess the water damage. Quite a few things got soaked. After this wonderful experience, I decided to always just take the extra time and drain the water heater. And to drain the water heater, the first thing we need to do is turn off the water shutoff valve right above the water heater. Another option is to simply turn the water off to your whole house. And sometimes I just go ahead and turn both of them off. Next, you'll want to go to any faucet in the house and turn on the hot side of the water. The water is going to start coming out, but then it should slow down to a really slow trickle and then to a drip. And we're actually going to leave this faucet open the entire time we're doing this replacement. Next, we're going to put a garden hose on the drain and then open up the valve. My drain valve has a slot up on top that I put a flathead screwdriver into, but some water heaters will have a ball valve or a spigot instead. And if we look at the other end of the hose, unfortunately there is absolutely nothing coming out. This means that there is a ton of sediment on the bottom of that water heater. So until that water seeps through there and comes out, it's going to take a long time. Typically a water heater takes about 10 to 20 minutes to drain, but if there's sediment involved, it takes longer. And if there's a lot of sediment to the point where like nothing is coming out at all, then it's probably going to take half a day, day, or it might not even fully drain at all. So what I'm going to do is try a couple of things to hopefully get it going. If that's not going to work, then I might just have to do it on the fly. The first thing we could try is simply blowing into the hose backwards. So I'm going to put my hand right over the end of the hose, just so I'm not kissing with the end of it. It's kind of gross. And just blow really hard back in there to hopefully dislodge whatever is blocking it. It was really hard to blow inside of it. I mean, if you use some compressed air, maybe that will help. But if we're talking about a lot of sediment, it's just gonna pile right back in. So that didn't do anything. Another thing I can try is taking the hose off. I'm gonna get some water pouring out, but that's okay. I'll just wipe it down. And then I'm gonna take a screwdriver and stick it inside of it and try to wiggle it around to make a little bit of a tunnel or a hole through that sediment to hopefully get this water draining faster. See, look at that, it's barely coming out. It's just trickling. So let's try it. Okay, that helped somewhat. Let's put this back on. And we got some water going, but oh boy, is it slow. At this point, I am really tempted to just go ahead and do it on the fly. The water heater is in the garage, so it's okay if the floor gets a little wet. So it's been about 25 minutes and it's draining so, so slowly like a turtle. If I had to guess, the water heater probably only drained up to here in 25 minutes. So I don't have all day. I don't want to keep waiting. What I'm going to do is I zip tied a bucket to the bottom right here. I threw a rag on the floor and I'm going to try to catch as much water as I can as I take this element out. Hopefully, if I get lucky, maybe it did drain past this top element, but most likely not. So when I take this old element out, we're going to see some water gushing out and then I'll try to shove the new one in as fast as I can. In order to take out the element, you're going to need a one and a half inch socket. The socket that I'm going to be using is called the heating element wrench. It's designed specifically for water heater elements, and you should be able to find them in just about any hardware store or just order it online. And if it's available for you, an even better option would be a deep socket with a breaker bar. But the best option is to have an impact drill with one of those sockets attached. But I realize that most people are going to be using this thing, so that's what I'm going to use as well. But before we continue, there's one very important thing that I have to mention. If you're going to be changing your element on the fly, make sure that the temperature of the water in the water heater is not scalding hot. Personally, I learned this the hard way and I want to make sure that none of you do that same mistake. When you turn the power off to the water heater, the first thing you do before you do anything else, open up one of the hot water faucets and just let some water out. Just let it run for about five minutes until you can put your hand under the water and not get burnt. 
Optimally, the best way to do this without wasting hot water is to turn the power off to your water heater and then just go take a shower or wash the dishes to use up some of that hot water. Another option is to simply turn the water heater off half a day or a day before you do the replacement. Okay, let's finally get back to the element. I'm gonna slide the socket on. And this part, a lot of people make it look easy, but don't be deceived. This is the hardest part of the whole entire job, taking the old element out. Sometimes those things are extremely stuck on there and they're near impossible to get out. As a lever or a handle, you can either use a long screwdriver or a bit extension. I like the bit extension just because it's a little bit more solid and hopefully that thing is not gonna bend on you as you're doing this. So the plan is to take this element out and then as quickly as possible, put the new one in. And just so you know, the old element might not look exactly the same as the new one, but that's okay. As long as the voltage and the wattage lines up, it should be good. Yep, and just as I suspected, it's not that easy. It is not coming out. If your element is not budging, you could try to use a mallet or a hammer to hammer on whatever it is that you're using for the lever to try to dislodge that element and get it started. Whew, I think I finally got it going using both hands as leverage. I got it started, okay. So this is the exciting part. I gotta try to take this out as quickly as possible. And because the new one has a little gasket on it, I don't need to put Teflon tape on. So let's get the party started. Well, that wasn't too bad. The element came out pretty easily. It had a bunch of buildup on it, but at least it didn't get stuck. I was able to pull it completely out. And since I had the bucket, most of the water that would have ended up on the floor ended up in the bucket, which is perfect. Less mopping for me. And for anybody interested, here is what the old element looked like. When you're tightening the new element down, you don't wanna go beast mode on it because that could wreck the gasket. Just tighten it down nice and snug. Once you feel that it's tight as you're spinning it, just give it a little bit more of a twist and that's all that's needed. In the worst case scenario, if the element is leaking a little bit, you could always come back and tighten it down later. Now that the element is in there securely, I gave it a couple of minutes to make sure that it's not leaking and it's not, so we're ready to assemble everything back together. As for the wire placement, it doesn't matter which wire goes to which terminal, so do whatever is most convenient. Make sure you tighten down the wires nice and tight, because if you have a loose connection, these wires can start to burn and melt. Now that I put everything back together, I belatedly realized that it would have probably been better if I opened up that fill valve first, and then put everything back together, just to make sure that there's no leaks. But being that I didn't actually drain my water heater, I think it should be fine. Here's a quick tip of the trade for you. When you're opening up any kind of valve, be it water or gas, you always wanna open it up nice and slow. Of course, don't forget to close your drain valve. And remember that faucet that we left open? When your water heater is completely filled back up, you're gonna see water come out of that. And when it just starts coming out, don't be surprised if you're gonna be seeing it coming out in spurts and if the water is dirty for the first minute or so. 
bubbles and different spitting noises are completely normal until all of the air inside of the pipes is pushed out. After we verified that the water heater is filled back up because water started pouring out of the faucet, we can go ahead and turn the power back on. After you turn the power back on, you should have hot water in about half an hour. I would also recommend coming back the next day and taking a look at the water heater and the floor and making sure that there's no leaks. And if you have one of these, now would be a good time to use it. And if you're not sure what this is, check out my video on the one device that every homeowner should have. Recently, I got myself a new dog and I named him Two Miles. Now I can tell all my friends that I walk two miles every single day.